Auspicious day, go past me. Today is go past me. Today is also disappearance day of three great devotees. He had a big herd of cows, nine lakh cows. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, their childhood, the childhood of any child is divided into three. First of all, there's Kumar, the first five years, and then there's Poganda, which is six up to ten. And at the end of 10, 11 up to 15, end of 15, that is called Kaishur. So three stages in the, the childhood. But Lord Krishna, he grew up very quickly. <laughs> what was five, five years for a normal child, Lord Krishna could cover that in three years and four months. So three years and four months, he graduated after, after three years and four months, he moved into Poganda. And then after six, at, at the age of six years and eight months, then he moved into Kaishore. And six years and eight months, plus another three years, and four months was 11. So that's when he moved to Mathura. That's when Kamsa sent Akrura to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. And so at the age of 11, should have actually been 15, but actually it was only 11. And Lord Krishna actually never grows older than the Kishore stage of life. 
wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Never, like the four Kumaras, you know, the four Kumaras, the sons of Brahma, they made a vow they wouldn't grow old. They just stay ch children, <coughs> or stay like young children. Although they're the oldest in the universe, the oldest sons of Brahma, they don't grow up. They're always like young children. So similarly, Lord Krishna, he, he doesn't grow past Kishore. He stays always youthful. Even when he's married with his queens in Dwarka, he's still like a young man. So today is the day when he graduated from taking care of the calves. That's, that was a done in the Poganda stage. From taking care of the calves, he would start to take care of the cows that became, became Kishore. So that means he was uh, six years and eight months. When they have the calves, they go with the cowherd boys in the forest. And when they have the cows, they also go in the forest. They'll go further, take the cows further, take the cows to the Yamuna, take the cows all over Braja. How, how many forests are there in Braja? Twelve, right. Twelve forests of Braja. So Lord Krishna would go every day in the different forests and bring the cows looking for new pastures with sweet grass. Just like Govardhan, Giriraj Govardhan. Govardhan had always very nice grass for the cows to eat. So Krishna, Lord Krishna would take the cows to often take them to Govardhan and they would enjoy to eat the grass there. And in Govardhan, in the times of Lord Krishna, there was also waterfalls and the cows could drink the water and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they would also drink the water from the waterfalls there coming down the slope of Govardhan. So it's like a celebration when the child grows up, just like, you know, nowadays we would celebrate child going to school. It's a celebration. And then the child going from primary school, going into secondary school, and then child going into university, then graduation. So in, in the times of the very culture, 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna, living in the home of Nanda Maharaj, the whole life was centered around the cows, <laughs> taking care of the cows. And because Nanda Maharaj had so many cows, he was very wealthy. There was no scarcity. Mahar Nanda Maharaj had so many cows, and with all the cows, a lot of milk. And from the milk, you can make yogurt, and then you can make butter and cheese and ghee. So Nanda Maharaj was wealthy. He had a lot of money, no, no scarcity in his home. Today, you know, we think of the people in Vrindavan, we think, oh, they're poor. But in the times of Nanda Maharaj, they were very wealthy. Wealthy people lived in the villages. On the land. They had land, they had cows. And with cows, then you have cow dung, which is a valuable fuel. Even today, you see in Braja, the people are burning cow dung and they cook on the cow dung. In Mayapur, also everywhere, you see they collect the dung, make the patties, and they will cook on it regularly. So today is the day in which Krishna started to take care of the cow. Today is also disappearance day of three great devotees. One devotee is called Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya. He, uh, he went to the school in Vrindavan run by Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami means the nephew of Rupa and Sanatana. 
So Jiva Goswami, his father was Anupam. Anupam passed away early, but Rupa and Sanatan, they were the uncles of Jiva Goswami. So Jiva Goswami went there to Vrindavan and stayed in Vrindavan with his two uncles, Rupa and Sanatan. And Jiva Goswami had a Gurukula. All right, did you send your children to Gurukula? No. Ooh. Gurukula, best education. Gurukula. Children should go to Gurukula and learn how to do devotional service. So Srinivas, he was sent from Bengal. He was, he was from a place called Srikanda, which is near to Katwa. Katwa, you know Katwa? Where Lord Chaitanya took Sanya. It's north of Mayapur. Lord Chaitanya, when he took it, he swam across the Ganga and he went to Katwa. In Katwa, there is the ashram of, uh, uh, not, not Ishwara Puri, but um, Keshava Bharati. Keshava Bharati was the one who gave Sanyan to Lord Chaitanya. So it's in Katwa. Sometimes we go there from Mayapur. You can get a train. You can go by train. Just takes an hour to go in the train. Or you can go by car. It's nice to go and see these holy places. So Srinivas Acharya, he was from a place called Srikanda. And he got sent to Vrindavan to get education from Jiva Goswami. And there he was in the Guru Kula and he was associated with uh, Naratam Das Thakur and Shamananda Pandit. They were also students in the school of Goswami. <laughs> so they, they became great devotees. They studied there in the Guru Kula. And then Jiva Goswami, after they studied in the Guru Kula, Jiva Goswami sent them sent them back to Bengal to preach. He wanted them to come back into Bengal because he knew all the devotees there were feeling the separation. Lord Chaitanya had left the world. Many of the different devotees, the associates of Lord Chaitanya, they were all leaving the body. So they wanted to encourage the devotees in Bengal so Jiva Goswami arranged to send the three top students, Srinivas, Naratam, and Shamananda. He sent them, he told you three go back to Bengal. And he gave them the books of the Goswamis. Now, 500 years ago, there was no book like this. Everything was on palm leaf. Everything was written on the palm leaf. Did you see the palm leaves? Did you see these books before? You can see some places they have the original copies. They have books. They have these palm leaves from 500 years ago. Just recently I was there. Uh, I was visiting one of the holy places. They had the original copy of the Chaitanya Bhagavan written by Vrindavan Das Thakur on palm leaves. And they still have it, they have it preserved there. And in Vrindavan, you can see some of the original books of Jiva Goswami. Vrindavan, they have the Vrindavan Research Institute there. And they have the original palm leaves. So they, they're trying to preserve these things. Of course, they get very old, <laughs> 500 years. Palm leaves also will deteriorate. These books, you know, after 20 years, 30 years, they start to deteriorate. You keep your Bhagavatam, right? They, they get old. They deteriorate. The palm leaves, somehow, they can last longer than these books. Anyway, Srinivas got sent back with all these three, with these other two devotees. And Jiva Goswami arranged a special bullet cart 
and he had a big trunk and they put all the books of the Goswamis in the trunk. And they gave them also some escorts, some people to go with them because they were walking from Vrindavan have to walk back to Mayapur. So it took a long time. So they were walking and they came to a place somewhere, it was somewhere like around Bihar. And they were resting for the night there, at this place in Bihar. But it turned out that this place, there was a, there was a, a king there, the ruler. And he got told by his uh, spies, he said, these people are coming and they're bringing a treasure. They told the king, these people are coming with a treasure. They've got a valuable treasure. So when the king heard that these people were coming through his kingdom with a valuable treasure, so the king thought how to steal it. Because the, the, the king wasn't such a good man. Anyway, he thought it's a rare opportunity. People are coming with some great wealth. We should steal it. We should get it. So he arranged these people that they went there in the night when everyone was asleep. And they stole, they stole all the, <coughs> the trunk with the books in. Actually, they didn't know that in the trunk was only books. They were thinking it was really some kind of treasure. They thought it may be wealth or special stones, precious stones, jewelry. They didn't know what it was. They just, they took the box, they took the trunk and they disappeared. So in the morning, when everyone woke up, they were shocked to see that all oh, the books have all been stolen. All of our books have all been taken away. So they thought, what to do now? Because it's not easy to get copies again. Not like we have books which are printed many thousands of copies. Every book was handwritten. You wanted another book, you had to get the Brahman to write it out for you. Oh, it's a gift from... Everything had to be handwritten. So Srinivas and Naratam and Shamananda, they were very much, they were in anxiety. We've been sent here with the books, all the books of the Goswamis, Rupa Goswami's books and Sanatana Goswami's books and Raghunath Goswami's books and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's books, all the great devotees' books. They were bringing them to Bengal and they've all been stolen. So what to do? So they decided that Naratam, he would go on and go to Bangladesh, go to Bengal, where he was from, and preach there. And Shamananda, he would go to Arisa, he would go to Kutkal and preach there. But Srinivas, whose disappearance was today, Srinivas, he was to stay in this area where the books had been stolen and try to find out who was taking the books and try to get them back. So Srinivas went around and he found out nearby there was one town and he went to that town. And then when he was in the town, he heard how there was a king there. And this king was fond of hearing the scriptures. The king had some pundits there who were coming to his palace every day to recite scriptures. So Srinivas thought I should go along and hear what they're saying. So Srinivas went to the program and he was sitting with other people and the pundit came in and the pundit began to speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. 
But Srinivas did already study Srimad Bhagavatam from Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Goswami, he'd written the Sandarbhas. Jiva Goswami had studied Bhagavatam from Rupa and Sanatan. Jiva Goswami was a fully, very, very advanced devotee. And he trained people like Srinivas in the teaching, in the message of the Bhagavatam. So the pundit came in and he was speaking on the Bhagavatam, but Srinivas was listening and he could understand the pundit was not giving a very good presentation of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srinivas began, he put some questions to the pundit and then he, the pundit couldn't answer and then Srinivas went on and he explained everything. And he, when he explained the message of the Bhagavatam, then the king was really impressed and he understood that this young man was a really great devotee. And so he, uh, he asked Srinivas to come regularly and to speak there. And so Srinivas would come and speak. And then the king, after some time, he revealed to Srinivas that actually his men were the ones who had stolen the books. And the king brought Srinivas to the place where he had the trunk with all the books in it. So Srinivas got back the trunk and he made the king a devotee. The king became his disciple, took initiation from him. And even the pundit who was coming and speaking there, he also became a disciple of Srinivas. So in this way, the king became a devotee and the king helped them to establish Krishna consciousness there in his kingdom. And they built temples there and made many, many devotees. So this was the preaching of Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya also wrote that very nice song, which we sing, the Goswami Astika, right? Krishna, Krishna, Kanana, Tana Paro, Prema, Pritambo, Nidhi, Dira, Dira, Tana, Priya, Priya, Karo, Nirna, Tsuro, Pujito, Shri Chaitanya, Kripa, Buro, Bhubi, Bhubo, Varavahantaraka Bande Ropa Sanatana Raghujago Sri Jiva Gopalago. This is uh, there are eight verses to this song, Goswami Astikam. Srinivasacharya wrote this, this uh, song describing the activities of the Goswamis how they study all the scriptures and how they're always chanting the holy name of Krishna. So Srinivas, he was not a Goswami in the material sense, although spiritually he was very renowned. He was married, he got married, and he had also a daughter. And his daughter went on to become a very great devotee. His daughter was a, she was given the name Hemalata, and later on she became Hemalata Sakurani. And she became, as when she grew up, she also became a spiritual master and she accepted disciples. She was a very great devotee from her childhood. She was very, very special. They could understand she was a very great devotee. So today is a disappearance day of Srinivas Acharya. Today is also disappearance day of who? Dhananjay Pandit? Dhananjay Pandit. And? And Gadadhar. Ah, oh, Gadadhar, right. Gadadhar Pandit. So Gadadhar Pandit, one of the Panchatattva, Gadadhar. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudeva. So Gadadhar, we say Gadadhar is the expansion from Srimati Radharani. 
um, Gadar Harpande come, um, Srimati Radharani comes into the past tense of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Gadar Harpande. And Gadar Harpande grew up in Mayapur and he was very, very intimately connected with Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya was still a young boy, Gadara Pandit was always with him, was always together. Gadara could not tolerate to be away from Lord Chaitanya. Whenever Nimai would go away, Gadara would find it unbearable. He would always be looking, where is Nimai? When is Nimai coming? So Gadara was Srimati Radharani in Krishna Lila. He came as Gadara Pandit in Chaitanya Lila. And when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, then Gadarhar followed him. And before that, Lord Chaitanya had been had gone to Gaya and taken initiation. And when he came back, he was always in ecstasy. He was and he would ask, Where is where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? When is he coming? So one day it happened, Gadarha said, you know, Lord Chaitanya embraced Gadarha and said, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And Gadarha said, he's in your heart. He's in your heart. And when Lord Chaitanya heard he's in the heart, Lord Chaitanya began to claw at his chest. He wanted to rip open his own heart to get Krishna. And Gadarha Pandit had to console him. Gadarha Pandit embraced him and held his hands and said, don't worry, he's coming just now. Just be patient. Just wait. Just be patient. So Lord Chaitanya's mother, Sachi, Sachi Mata, when she saw Gadarha taking care of her son, she was very appreciative. And she told Gadarha that you please always stay with Nimai. Always be with him and help him. Don't let him do things like ripping his body apart to get his heart out. So she requested Gadaha always to be with Nimai. So later on, Gadaha also got initiation. And as we said, Gadaha was Srimati Radharani in Krishna Lila. So who becomes the guru of Gadaha Pandit? The guru of Gadarha Pandit is a person called Pundari Vijanidi. And Pundari Vijanidi, he is not different from Radharani's father. Father of Radharani is Maharaj Rishapandu, right? Kirtida and Rishapandu. So Maharaj Rishapandu, he came and got. Chaitanya Lila as a person called Pundarik Vijaniti. Even today in Bangladesh, there is a place called Pundarik Dam, which is where Pundarik Vijaniti lived. He was a wealthy person. So it happened that Pundarik Vijaniti came to Mayapur and Makunda, Makunda told Gadarha. There's a great devotee coming to Mayapur. You should go to see him. So Gadarha went to see Pundarik Vijani. And when he saw Pundarik, Pundarik, you know, Pundarik was a rich person. So he had, he had a lot of ornaments on, and many rings on his fingers, and earrings, and necklaces. And he was sitting with so many chair birds and pumpkins and different drinks and sweets in front of him. And he was nicely dressed in silk and his hair was all nice and everything. And Gadarha, he's a brahmachari. And when Gadarha saw him, Gadarha thought he must be a materialist. Gadarha was just looking at him externally and he thought he looks like a materialist. I don't think he can be a very good devotee. So then Makunda was watching and Makunda could understand what Gadarhar was thinking. 
So Makunda sang a beautiful verse from the Bhagavatam. Who knows the verses from the Bhagavatam? What about you? Do you know the verse? No. Aho Bhakiya Sanakya Jagam Saya Payanet Apiya Sati Pravegatim Dakre Uchitam Tatankyam Kampadaya Lam Sharanam Prajima Like that. This is the verse. This is a verse in the third canto. Third canto, yes. Yeah, second canto. It's a verse describing, Buddha was describing Lord Krishna. He said, who, who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna? Why is Lord Krishna merciful? Because he accepted Putana. Putana. Oh, Bhakti Yam. Bhakti. Bhakti means the sister of Bakasura. The sister of Bakasura, Putana. Nice sister, eh? A nice family, brother and sister. There's Agasura, Bakasura, and Putana. They're all one family. Wow. <laughs> so, Lord Krishna, Putana, Aho Bhakti, Stana Kala Kutam. She's got the poison on her breast and she's come to feed baby Krishna. And Lord Krishna thinks she wants to be my nurse. She wants to be my, she's picking up baby Krishna. Aho bhakti yam stana kala kutam jagam saya payan and apia sadhi la vega tim datri uchitam tananya. She becomes the datri, the nurse. Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna, because Putana disguised like a gopi, she dressed like a gopi, she had a gopi dress on, and she made herself look just like a gopi, and they all thought, oh, she's a gopi, and they let her in to see Krishna. But she wants to kill Krishna, but Krishna thinks she wants to be my mother, she wants to be my nurse. So Lord Krishna took her to the spiritual world to become his nurse, to become a nurse in the spirit in Goloka. Who could be more merciful than Krishna? Nobody, huh? Not, so Uddhava said, Aho Bhakti Yamstana. Nobody could be no, more merciful than Krishna. That he takes his demon food. So Makunda sang the verse. And when Kundarik Vidyanini heard the verse, Wow! He fell off his seat and he rolled on the ground and he was rolling and rolling. He was crying and his tears were coming from his eyes. The whole floor flooded with the water, the tears coming from his eyes. And he was rolling on the ground in ecstasy for hours. <laughs> this was Pundarik Vijani. His bhava, his love for Krishna was awakened just by hearing that one verse. So, Gadahar was watching and Gadahar was shocked because Gadahar was thinking, oh, he's just a materialist. He's not a very great devotee. He just looks like a materialistic person. But when he saw him do that, then Gadahar thought, oh, he's really a great devotee. And so Gadahar regretted that. So afterwards, Gadahar considered I committed an offense against Pundarik Vijanidi. I was thinking he was a materialist. So Gadahar thought, how to make up for my offense? He thought, I should take initiation. So he went to Lord Chaitanya and he asked Lord Chaitanya, I'm thinking I should get initiation. And I think Pundarik Vijanidi would be my, would be, could be my guru. Lord Chaitanya said, very good, very nice, go and do it. So he went to Pundarik Vijanidi, and on a, a suitable day, Pundarik Vijanidi accepted Gadarha as his disciple. So later on, Gadarha then went to Puri with Lord Chaitanya. He went to Puri and he stayed in Puri, and Lord Chaitanya gave Gadarha the deity. Very special deity, Tota Gopina. 
Sota Gopina, the deity of Gopina, not very far away from the Jagannath Puri temple. You can, uh, you, we can, we also get to go into that temple. Sota Gopina. We don't get to go in, I don't get to go into Puri, into Jagannath temple, but I can go into Sota Gopina. And uh, so Gadahar worshipped this deity of Gopina. But the deity was quite tall. And Gadarha was getting old. It was difficult for him to put the crown on. So after some time, because it was getting so difficult for Gadarha to put the crowns on the deity, the deity sat down. The deity folded its legs and sat down, just as you are sitting. The deity of Gopinath is like that. You don't see many Krishna deities like that. They're very special. So this was the reciprocation between Gopinath and Gadarha, that the deity came down so that Gadarha could serve the deity easily. So, and, and it said also, it said when Lord Chaitanya left the world, that Lord Chaitanya disappeared into the Gopinath deity that Lord Chaitanya entered into the deity of Gopinath. And there's a golden line there on the leg of Gopinath, just on the knee of Gopinath. They'll show you the golden line. Say, this is where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered into the body of Gopinath. So this temple was worshipped even today by the disciples of Gadarhar Pandit. They maintain the worship there. We often usually go there, take the side up there from the temple, Sota Gopina. So Gadaha, every day he would read Srimad Bhagavatam and Lord Chaitanya would come to Gadaha and he would have Lord, he would have Gadaha read Srimad Bhagavatam. And again and again, Lord Chaitanya would hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. And Gadaha would read every day to Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya was very intimately connected with Gadarha. The two of them were inseparable. But Lord Chaitanya at one point he wanted to go to South India and he told Gadarha, you have to stay here. And Gadarha didn't want to stay. He said, no, I want to go with you. Wherever you go, I want to go. But Lord Chaitanya said, no. He said, you promised to stay here. He said, I've given you Gopinath. You have to serve Gopinath. You cannot give up the service of Gopinath. So it was very difficult for Gadarha. He had to stay in Jagannath Puri while Lord Chaitanya went to South India. But later on, Lord Chaitanya came back and he would regularly be with Gadarha. And here, Srimad Bhagavatam. So after Lord Chaitanya departed from the world, it was unbearable for Gadarha. He could not tolerate to be in the world and not to be with Lord Chaitanya. So within one year of Lord Chaitanya's departure, Gadarha also departed from this world. So today is the day in which Gadarha disappeared, in which he finished his pastime in this world went to join Lord Chaitanya. So today is also the disappearance day of Dhananjai Pandit, a very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'm not familiar with any particular pastimes. Dhananjai Pandit. Dhananjai Pandit? Yeah. yeah. Then Jai Pandit was a very, Pandit was a very rare sport. 
Nityanand Prabhu was always present in his heart. Chaitanya Bhagavat Sankhya 5733. His Shripat is at Sital Gram, Mangal Kota Khat, Barthaman district. There is a railway station at Kai Kaishore on the Metre Gauch line from Katwa to Barthaman. If one gets down at Kaishore, then it is about a 20 minute walk to the village of Shital Gram. Ananya Pandit also stayed at Sankra Pancha for some time. According to the opinion of some, he was born in the village of Jargram within the district of Chatagram. He was present during Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan pastime to Namdi. After returning from Vrindavan, he also worshipped the deities at Jalandi Gram. At present, the deities of Sri Gopinath, Sri Sri Nitai Gaur, and Sri Damodar Shalakram Shila are being worshipped there. <coughs> he has no dependents, but he had a brother by the name Sri Sanjay, whose son was Sri Damakanai Thakura. His Sripat is located at Guluk Gram near Bolpur. Sanjay was perhaps the disciple of Ananjaya Pandit. The present Sevatar at Sital Gram are the descendants of Ananjaya Pandit's disciple. His dis disappearance is on the eighth day of the bride or night of the month of Kartik. Sanjay, thank you. All right, any question, anybody? Mm -hmm. huh? So today, a very auspicious day in this month of Kati. We remember these three great Vaishnavas. And now we can do Damada. Yeah. Today we need to take the session of Ananda Pandit's lotus feet. Today is? Uh, the uh, Radharani's lotus feet. We get Darshan of Radharani's Lotus Feet once a day mm -hmm. today in, in Shira Mayapur Lanshwar. Normally, the skirt is falling on the Lotus Feet. We don't get Darshan of Lotus Feet. That's controversial whether or not you should get Darshan of Radharani's Lotus Feet. But in Mayapur, I think. There was some discussion on it which the prophet said we shouldn't get Darshan. Oh. And even Radha Ashtabhi did. <laughs> Twice a year, I, I heard. All the other days, not, not possible. Controversial. What's it? She doesn't give Darshan in the Buddha's feet. Any question? Maharaj name, Ashtabhi in the sepasite, sabke baare mein sabke baare mein sabke baare mein baare mein sabke baare mein sabke baare mein sabke baare mein sabke baare mein and then on Friday we begin Vishma Pancha which Friday is the Ekadasi Ekadasi is to get three of sinful reactions. You're not going to get any spiritual world. You don't know that you'll get entrance into the spiritual sky just by chanting the Namabas. They say liberate Liberate, what does liberation mean? Liberation means now you can begin devotional service. Well, it can mean different things. So question, what does liberation mean? Liberation means you're free of the modes of nature. Liberation means now you can take up devotional service. 
has different meanings. But not everybody's in the Dom. They may physically they may be in the Dom, but yeah. mentally they're not really yeah. in the Dom. They don't really see the Dom. You don't enter the Dom. Like the landing there. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Some is a Muslim, they leave the body in the Dom? Yeah. Really? They're not really in the Dom. Graphical location is not a dam, right? But kind of, uh, even uh, if at the, the animals which are born, like the dogs and the monkeys, they are not in the dam. <laughs> they have some sukruti of being in the dam and they now take birth because of their offenses they commit in the dam. They get a body of an animal. Become a hog or a dog or a monkey. Something. I mean, Gopal monkey. Bye. 